So I recently purchased this clock off of one of my sites that I go to, and I got it for $25. It's a Herbert Herr beer drinker's clock. And um, it came with a pendulum, but didn't come with any weights. It is also... got this guy in the chimney that comes out when it cuckoos so um, the clock is in really good shape it's got a silent lever on it and so uh, I'm gonna take it apart and sort out the chains and get this thing taken away. The only thing I don't like about it so far is it's got a steeple in the bellow. And this is uh, number 218 of 500. I guess they made 500 of these clocks at that time frame. Um, because it's a Herbert Herr, there's no date code on it. So, um, I would only be guessing if I told you time frame it was made. So, let's get started. We have to take the hands off. which consists of taking the nut off and then this washer and Herbert Herr uses square hands square hole hands and then the the brass fitting itself it's part of the hand in this clock. Then the hour hand flips off. Disconnecting the uh, cuckoo, which is a newer cuckoo. I'm going to say this clock is not that old. Maybe five years old. I don't know. But the uh, bird itself is newer. And then we have to sort out the chains. Why they ship it this way, I have no idea. There's one chain already out. But the uh, cuckoo chain is wrapped up and behind the movement. There we go. Let me put the uh, minute hand back on and show you what it does when it cuckoos.
if I can show you It's not working, so I'm just going to take it apart and get it to work. Let's see if this screwdriver will work for taking out the bellow. Phillips screws. Once you um, get the Phillips screw out, put a flat screwdriver in and give it a twist, and the bellow will come off that staple. <whistles> the bellows are in really good shape and I always like putting a rubber band around one of the wires just to force a habit that way I know this wire goes with this bellow I take the low note bellow out Typically, the low note bellow is on the left side of the clock, and it is the second bellow that goes off. And... The low note bellow, in this case, makes the beer drinker drink. As you can see, he's loose on here, so he's not going to need to be glued back on. But the, uh, the way it's set up, I need to spread this wire apart some. To get the wire off of that lever that's coming off the movement, but it also is connected to the lever that is connected to the beer drinker. So slide that off, and now the bell will come out. Now this is the only beer drinker clock that I have, and uh, they're typically pretty expensive to purchase. The high note bellow is the one that makes the guy come out of the roof. As you can see, this wire that he's connected to But the uh, 
Uh, need levers not wanting to uh, to move. Again, I'm going to have to uh, separate this wire to disconnect it from the guy that comes out of the roof. Now, when I lift on this wire, you can see he comes out of the roof. I really wish the... Um, Clock would cuckoo because I need this chain to come down. shut off movement shut off strike side off on typically they're up in the air to uh, make them shut up and they go down to uh, to make them cuckoo but in this case I think it's backwards But I'm going to take those four screws out and get this movement out somehow, so stand by. This was a pain in the butt to get out. As you can see, I had to take the dial off. I had to take this side cover off. And... Um, In order for it to cuckoo, this lever has to go up in the air, where typically the lever goes down. But on this particular clock, the lever has to go up in the air. And so, with it up in the air, It was working. something stopping it again. But as you can see with it down, it forces the uh, rack not to be able to move. But when I push it up, the rack can move and there it goes it was working It's definitely out of adjustment.
because they don't want to work half the time. It's dirty. So, uh, you can see there's all kinds of filth on this movement. Remember her when I was out of business three or four years ago? So, um, how this movement is, I again, I don't know because they don't have a date code. But because it has a new bird on it, it's it's not that old. Maybe one of the last movements that they made. But... Like I said, we're going to take it apart and um, put it back together. One of the reasons how you could tell a Herbert Herb movement is because of this piece right here. This part that slides up and down. Herbert Herb is the only company that does that as, as far as I'm aware of. And... When the clock is cuckooing, it has this arm, just like in the old count wheel type clocks. It has this arm here that pushes on this arm here, which makes the bird go out. If your bird is going out the door, when the clock goes into warning, it is because this arm here is too close to this arm here. So when the clock cuckoos, the lever pushes on that, the bird comes out, this rack stop lever rides up the rack to tell how many t times to uh, cuckoo, and when it gets done, this lever here hits this, which in turn, right now the, the clock is in cuckoo mode because this arm is resting on a notch that's on this lever here, which keeps it out of cuckoo. And when it's done, it this lever hits this arm, which in turn gets this rod out of this notch right here. See, I can put it back in that notch. And when it's done cuckooing, and that's what that slot is for, is to allow that lever to go up and down until it's done cuckooing. So when it's done cuckooing, Watch this arm here. It's going to hit that shaft, which allows that shaft to get out of this notch that's on this lever here, which will in turn allow the cuckoo to go back inside. Now, if when it's done cuckooing, if this doesn't hit this notch, you might have to modify this to make it come down further to hit that notch, to hit that shaft. And also, you have this um, 
this uh, brass fitting that is compression fit onto this shaft, which acts as the counterweight. But watch when it when it's done cuckooing. If I can get it to cuckoo now, there we go. It's almost going to hit this shaft because it's almost done cuckooing. There it goes. And then bird goes back in. One more time. Cuckoos. This shaft is in that notch on that arm. If I can get it to go back in there. And when it's done cuckooing. This arm on the rack stop lever hits this shaft right here, which in turn allows the bird to go back inside the case. And then the tab goes into the Pac Man's mouth. You have to know how a clock functions in order to be able to repair it. The Herber Her movements are a little bit different from the regular movements. This particular movement has still got the spring. A lot of the Herber Her movements don't have this spring to hold this rack stop lever down so now we have to uh, take this movement apart clean it up and put it back together I'm going to start by taking the bird off because I don't want to put it in the cleaner. I already took the, uh, the uh, leader wire off. I'm going to take this the gong and everything off. The spring here connected to the movement to make the uh, hammer go back where it needed to be. The longer wire is the uh, high note lift wire and the uh, shorter wire which is the wire in the middle is the low note lift wire. Taking the spring off for the uh, rack stop lever. There's an E clip here and an E clip here that I need to take off to take the rack and snail off. And they're extremely tiny. Typically, you could make them flat and then um, make them flat with the post. And then the, there's a little gap that you can try to get something inside. And that's how tiny they are. So there's the rack. The rack is what counts the cuckoo. And I have a, uh, a video that discusses 
what each part of a cuckoo clock movement is using a regular movement. Now to take this E-clip off, you should be able to see the gap between the E-clip and the post. You just put something in there to get it out. And my tools are magnetic, which helps so things don't go out into no man's land. Taking the washer off. Here's the snail. This is the minute wheel with minute pinion. Now to take off the, um, the shutoff lever. As you can see, the shutoff lever, it lifts when you got it in the down position it lifts the the uh, lift lock lever which is this lever right here and the lift lock lever is what lifts the rack stop lever so uh we'll get this out of the way Hopefully. And to get the um, rack stop lever off, there's an E clip on the inside of the plate. So I can now take the rack stop lever off. And there's an E-clip on the inside of the plate for the lift lock lever. And sometimes the E-clips for the lift lock lever, the rack stop lever versus the E-clips that you take off for the rack and for the minute wheel with minute pinion sometimes they're different sizes so you have to pay attention because sometimes if they're different sizes when you go to put them back together you want the right clip for the right item So now I'm going to get out the uh, the stands to put on the movement so we can take the nuts off. And there's also an E-clip on this post right here, which the uh, rack stop lever hits. In order to take this post off, you have to take that E-clip off. And if you don't take this E-clip off, the movement will not come apart because this will keep it from coming apart. Now, if you don't have these uh, legs for the movement, you can use a bowl, a piece of plumbing fixture, a big round roll of tape to set this thing in anything that will hold the movement up that will hold the uh, a minute wheel with a uh, center pinion this right here out of the way will work I just happened to purchase 
these items, so I use them. And I don't like using pliers on the nuts. I got this kit right here that my son bought me, so I might as well use it. That way I don't destroy the nuts. You can purchase this kit off a of wish for like five bucks or something like that. I love it. I use it all the time. And if I take these off carefully, you should have already taken pictures of the movement all the way around. That way you can put it back together. But if I take this off carefully, it will be able to uh, see how it goes back together with this rear plate off. Hopefully, uh, everything will stay in position. Now the virgin crutch assembly. It goes right here. And then the uh, second wheel. Goes like that. But as you can see. This is how. The movement. Looks with the rear plate off. You have. Your time train and your strike train. I'm going to take the virgin crutch assembly off. On your time train, on a cuckoo clock, you have what's called the great wheel, which is also known as T1. And then you have T2, which is the second wheel on the time train and then you have the escapement wheel which is t3 a one day cuckoo clock has three wheels in the time train an eight day cuckoo clock has an extra wheel in the time train to make it an eight day clock it also has another wheel in between the great wheel on the time side and the great wheel on the strike side. But if you don't know whether your clock is a one day clock or an eight day clock, count the wheels in the time train. T1, which is a great wheel, T2, and T3 or the escapement wheel. This is a one day clock. If it was an eight day clock, it would be T1, T2, T3, and T4. It would have an extra wheel in the time train. I wanna check the uh, ratchet wheel to make sure it's working properly. This bushing right here is what holds the ratchet section or the, the, the part that the chain goes around up against this wheel here. If you had too much play in it or if it, the ratchet wasn't working properly, it's because this bushing is too far down 
are these fingers on this piece here. In this case, it's too loose. I'm going to tighten it up. I shouldn't be able to spin it around like that. I'm not. I'm going to tighten it up by putting pressure and then pushing these fingers down because that is too loose. On the strike side, you got to fly and you want to make sure it's nice and tight. If I was to flick it and it sat there and spun around, your cuckoo is going to go crazy. It's not going to go cuckoo. It's going to sound more like a quail clock. Coo -coo 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 -coo. And then you have this wheel right here, which is the warning wheel with warning pen. This wheel here has got the Pac-Man on the other side of it, or what I call the Pac-Man. And then you got the great wheel for the strike side. And again, this wheel is too loose. This three tab finger is too loose. So I will have to tighten that up also. So now it's time to uh, wipe this off with a rag a toothbrush etc because you got all this junk that's on the plate and you're you don't want all this stuff in your cleaning agent i have an ultrasonic cleaner if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner you could clean this stuff up with Dawn dish detergent or dish detergent of your choice, hot water, a toothbrush, and a rag, and then toothpicks to every one of these holes to get all the junk off. But because I have an ultrasonic cleaner, I'm going to use my ultrasonic cleaner. But an ultrasonic cleaner, I've said this time and time again it's like a dishwasher you have to pre-wash your dishes prior to putting them in a dishwasher because you don't want all the food and junk on your dishes in the dishwasher because it will not clean it up that well so therefore you need to pre-wash your clock parts prior to put them in a ultrasonic cleaner and afterwards you need to take a toothpick to every one of the holes anything that has a hole you need to take a toothpick to it to include this because it's got a hole this because it has a hole Anything that has a hole, you need to take a toothpick to it. So anyway, we'll come back after I get this thing out of the ultrasonic cleaner and put it all back together. You might ask, how do you go about tightening this up? You find a block of wood with some holes in it. And then you find a tool such as a socket, a deep well socket that fits over the shaft and then tapping it with a hammer and, 
and now it's tight. This doesn't spin like it was. And this is no longer wobbly. It still ratchets. And so I'm happy with it. You might ask, how do you loosen it up? Well, you'd have to find like a screwdriver or something and pry in here. Very carefully going all the way around until it loosens up. Yeah, I get the uh, parts out of the cleaner. And I want to point something out to you. The Herbert Her one day verge assemblies is different from a regular one day verge assembly. This is a regular one day verge assembly. As you can see, I, I took this out of this movement. As you can see, the pivot fits in the hole. Herbert Her, the pivot doesn't fit in the hole. So the pivot is a little bit bigger. Plus, this is the Herbert Her. This is the regular. You could see that the Herbert Her. either entry or exit palette is is um, smushed maybe that's the word for it bigger than the regular and let me get out my digital caliper here This is the regular, and we're going to say that the width is around 12. Now, on the Herbert Her, the width is much smaller, 10. So... If you have to get a different verge assembly for your clock, make sure that you're ordering a Herbert Her and not a regular because the Herbert Her will not work on the regular and vice versa. There's a two millimeter difference in the width of the verge assembly itself. I see what the width is overall length. We'll call it 23.5 on the Herba Her. Again, on the regular, twenty three point five. So, big difference will not a regular verge assembly will not work on a Herbert Her. Now, putting the movement back together. This lever right here has got to do with when the clock stops. And there's a notch right here. And that notch is going to go into a pin 
on the second wheel this wheel right here you see the pen that notch is gonna go the pen is gonna go into that notch so you have to make sure that you got that set up properly And the third was warning pin, then the ply, then on the time side, the great wheel, the second wheel, and then the escapement wheel. And I took toothpick. A toothpick to every one of these holes as I was discussing earlier and trying to see over this camera and then the uh, verge assembly And now to put this plate on with all that in place. And the object is to start all four nuts. And once you get all four nuts started, And I said started, not tightened down. Once you get all four nuts started, you should be able to uh, put everything in place. Getting the great wheels to pop into place. And once you get the great wheels in place, you can tighten down the lower nuts and then work your way. I like working on the time side myself. You can use a toothpick, a pair of tweezers, whatever you want to use to push everything in place. You don't force anything. You'll, you'll bend pivots if you force things.
and your schema will pop out of place. Third wheel is out of place. And I got to move this camera so I can see. So I'll be right back. Now I got everything, the main parts on the movement, doing a function test on the strike side, it ticks away, doing a function test, sorry, on the time side, it ticks away, doing a function test on the strike side, remember I told you that this lever has to go into that pin on the second wheel. And when I push the gear the right way, we'll trip it here. It goes around one time and then it catches that tab on, on this lever here. The Pac-Man is upside down, which is no big deal. So I, you could take them off and put it back on. The next step is to put your levers for the Cuckoo and the um, Gong on. Because the star wheel is on the inside on a Herbert Herb movement. On a regular movement, the star wheel is on the outside, and you can take the star wheel off and put it where you want. But with the Herbert Herb, the star wheel is on the inside. So I have to put the levers on to see when it's done cuckooing if it's going to um, function properly that's what I'm getting at And I put it on wrong. So I have to take it back out. The, these tabs here need to catch the star wheel. I got it upside down. Been a while since I worked on a Herbert Herb movement, and um, stuff happens. No big deal. Stand by. It'll be easy to do. All I have to do is take this nut out, spread the plate a little bit. I'm going to have to take the other nut off also. Spread the plate a little bit, take this out, and put it in the other way. But I'm going to do that off camera. Around, and I have to put more parts on before I could do a function test. I already got the uh, rack stop lever on. Now put the lift lock lever on. And 
I just wanted to show you with magnetic screwdriver you can start the e-clip but it's kind of hard to finish it so if you take a toothpick a wooden dowel whatever you can push it on like so sometimes you magnetic tools take away from what you're trying to do getting back to um, the gong put it on and let the clock strike one one time to see where the gong is going to be because you might have to um, adjust the um, a great wheel some if the gong lever is touching the star when the clock goes into warning it'll actually about five minutes till the time is supposed to strike if it's touching the star it'll the great wheel will move just a little bit just allow the gong to strike when it the clock goes into warning so you don't want it to be touching the star is what I'm getting at you want it to be away from the star and right now it is touching the star so I'm going to move the great wheel just a little bit And I went the wrong way, so I got to move it some more. Because, like I said, you don't want it to be touching the star. Now it's got clearance, so I'm happy with that. So, um, I have to do the same thing with the other levers because if a low note lift lever is occupying the same space as the gong, when the clock strikes, what will happen is the low note lift lever will two, then the gong, and then the high note lift lever. So um, let me put those parts together, and then I'll get back with you.